Just as there are seasons, there's a time for sleep and there's a time for action. We are awakening the giant. The last few days has witnessed a remarkable event that may reshape the perception of the black race. The mother of George Ford by a Minneapolis policeman, the races ran by Amy Cooper, and the not so subtle plot to tarnish and ultimately remove Mr. Kumi additional as the CEO of African Development Bank has raised some pertinent questions about our identity as a people. For many years, black people, or people of color, as I like to put it, have been subjected to various forms of physical, psychological, and mental abuse. Our history and, our, and identity have been distorted, and we are now made to believe that we're the back to the rest of the world. This position would have made sense if nearly all the world's mineral and precious deposits were not situated in Africa. The price of our raw material is depreciating daily, yet the price of finished or semi-processed products are sorry. According to Mr. Adeshino, Africa accounts for over 70% of global cocoa production and 2% of the 100 billion chocolate market. Africa must wake up. The dream of our great leaders, like Kwame Nkrumah, for a united and borderless Africa is now. We must never export raw materials again without adding value to it. Africa spends $35 billion on food imports today, and that figure will grow to over $100 billion by 2025 if nothing is done to address this environment. We must shed our loss for foreign grants and other external ex uh, interventions as they have not served us in any way. Our development may not serve the purpose of our supposed colonial masters. This is a call to action for every African and by extension, every person of color to contribute towards the success of Africa. If we succeed, they succeed. I would end with an African phrase, Ubuntu, I am because we are. Fantastic. Let me just jump in right here. This is a topic topical to my heart. As you guys know, I'm in Canada. So racism is something that I must have experienced. Just believe that, that anybody in the diaspora who is in any reasonable function has experienced racism. Now, you know what they say, the final straw that broke the camel's back, I think was George Floyd. You know, if you're stacking the, the camel, you won't know that this is the last straw. Now the back of the camel has been broken and you can't put it back. And now all over the world is riots everywhere. Even in as white and peaceful as Amsterdam, you see lot, hundreds of people, thousands of people coming out to say, you know what, this is not right. For the first time, white police officers are coming on TikTok, YouTube to say, you know what, this man was murdered. How can you say I cannot breathe, and yet you can't just release him? Meanwhile, you have four people with guns, and this man is handcuffed. How powerful is he? So we know that this is a genocide. So what I'm saying is everything needs to start from the critical justice system reform. Now, you cannot change the mind of a human being. A hu <laughs> an evil human being is an evil human being, and they're evil geniuses. I can't know what's in your mind, but whenever you break the law, Whenever you kill someone, you should be held to book. So for me, I'm very excited about the new tomorrow for the black race. Okay, black lives actually do matter. You understand? You tell me it doesn't matter. I will tell you it's an equal life. If we do the DNA analysis, China, England, United States, Nigeria, Ghana, we're all the same DNA sequence. So we're all human. Um. Yeah, I want to look at it from um, the African perspective. Um, the world looks down on Africa because our leaders look down on us. As we are in Africa, we, ought, we can't breathe also. In Nigeria, we can't breathe. We it's, can't. It's worse we can't us. breathe. Just now we talked about health. We can't breathe. No, we can't. We're talking about funds meant to develop the Niger Delta, finding its way into private pocket. The Niger Delta can't breathe. And, and so when you have a situation like that where our leaders you know, have their, their, their kneel on our neck and our hands in handcuff and we can't breathe. Why wouldn't the rest of the world look down on us? Absolutely. And that's why they are looking down on us. If, as um, uh, Maki uh, had said, and like um, as re-echoed by uh, Seydou, 
if we don't only export cocoa, but we add value to cocoa. Right. And then that $100 billion industry, we have 60% of it. Nobody will come detect to us. If we do not export crude, we refine it here and we add value to it. Nobody will detect to us. If we do not bring in Chinese to come process our raw materials, and then in some cases, take it back home and bring it to us, nobody will detect to us. Our leaders and the rest of us as followers have allowed all of this. We can't breathe. Rather than shout, cry out that we can't breathe, we remain there. And that's why the world is seeing us as, as um, the backwaters. Until we rise up, like we said last week, and see this as an opportunity to spring forth and raise a new Africa. Ten years from now, we'll still be complaining that we can't break. Well, let me quickly jump in. What I want to say is the BBC report about um, Akimumi, the fact that they referred to his suits and his bow ties and that he's flamboyant, I found it distasteful. It's, this um, is a man who would had a career before he even became a minister in Nigeria and then went on to become, you know, the president of the AFDB. It's, how, all, in, how do you, it's all in the name how do you of calling, giving a dog a bad name. No, give a dog a bad name. Give a dog a bad name in it's, order it's, to it's, hang it. It's amazing. But uh, let, 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 me, let me say that, um, again, I'm going to quote one of my favorite writers, Lance Morrow. And he said something that was significant. He said something that there's something about um, the African development clock or the African psyche that broke when, when colonial governments, when colonialism came into us. And, just, and we're still, that clock, we're still trying to fix it. And, and some of the vestiges of the brokenness of that clock, uh, that development cycle, is the kind of leaders, so yeah. um, so they enable the worst of us to, to be, rule the, to best, rule of the us. best of us, and that's a system. Um, and again, in terms of the racism, um, that's part of it because to control a people that needed to knock us down and make us look like beasts, less than human, so so that someone will actually feel justified. You know, I mean, if you go to the the, the, the horrible carnage in Rwanda and so describe people as cockroaches, you know, yeah. the, so if I make you less than a human yeah. being, yeah. then I'll feel no guilt, no nothing. If when yes. I crush you or when I when I when I unleash evil on you, and that's been a it's been a systematic process that is still with us, and we we, we have to battle it. And I think that um, Liberos, your point is exactly germane that we need as a people, as a cycle within us as Africans to do more. In fact, to trade, for example, we need to trade more with, 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 with ourselves. With ourselves. Yeah. You know, that's the first yes. thing. Because if you're not doing that, if you're not building our own economy, building our own confidence, um, then we keep looking up to the West yes. or to, for, to, yes. for grants. For, for, for grants. This over-reliance, if the West is not in it, then it's not validated, it should stop. Yeah. I mean, look at AFDB. The U.S. is the biggest shareholder there. No, they're not. No, actually, no. Only six, only yeah, six, only six, six percent. percent. Six percent. They are, but they, they have this power. Yeah, because and you, then you, you, use, you trade with their dollar. You, you trade and with once yeah. you trade with their dollar, any dollar that they can actually, you're sitting in a village in somewhere in Enugu State, and because you use a dollar transaction, they can come and arrest you because you traded with it. So they've created the world economic system. And, yeah. and, and then you rely on it. And so when you rely on such, such trade, it makes them look as if, oh, yes, yeah. they can always detect and, and so that's basically what's right. happening here. Right. So, um, a resounding cry, if I ever had one, I'm still in the midst of questioning the status quo. Allow me to table some questions of my own um, after the break. But before we go, I, you know, just to keep reemphasizing this, we need to end the rape culture um, that's prevalent in our country. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.